I'm going to show you some tricks that could help you build like a Minecraft pro. This is Minecraft episode one of the World Edit Guide. This series is designed to take a complete Minecraft World Edit novice through to a point where they can competently use World Edit as a tool for their Minecraft builds. I'm going to break it down into bite-sized manageable chunks so each episode builds on the last. And that allows you to skip to the episode that you don't know rather than having to sit through one long video of stuff that you already do know. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's crack on with it. The first thing you have to do is install the World Edit mod for your version of the game. I already did a full tutorial on this, so I've linked that in the description below so this episode can focus on how we actually use it. But to cut a long story short, you need to download and install the Fabric mod loader for your game version and the Fabric API. Download the Fabric World Edit mod for the same game version, for example, I'm using 1.19.3, and put the mod in your Minecraft mods folder before starting the game. And I'll put those links down in the description below, but remember, you need to change it if you're using a different version. That's enough of the techie jargon, let's get on with it. Today we are talking about selecting and setting, including setting with more than one block. Now there's a few ways in which you can select an area, I'm going to go through them all now. So I want to select the entirety of this weird modern sculpture looking thing. I know, don't judge me, this wasn't an art lesson. Now this shape is actually quite cuboid, so it is dead easy. The first thing I want to do is type slash slash wand. That's going to give me a wooden axe. You could just get your wooden axe from your inventory if you like. I am going to left click on this bottom left hand corner. You can see it has selected that block there. I'm going to come up and I'm going to select this furthermost corner at the top. That gives me the entirety of the shape. Now I do need to let you know for the purpose of the tutorials, I'm using World Edit CUI plugin, which allows me to see the areas of the bounding box that I've selected. With just standard World Edit, you won't get that red grid. You'll just need to think of what your area is in your mind, or you can download the CUI as well. I'll put the link for that in the description. And if I want to deselect it, that's also dead easy. Just type slash slash SEL and that deselects it completely. But let's say your shape was a little bit wonky and you didn't have an exact corner with a block. Well, that doesn't matter. You can still do the same thing. Select one of the corners that you've got, if it's the outermost corner, and then come to approximately where the furthest left and right is. So kind of on the outside of that and that. And then type slash up and I'm going to maybe slash up 14. That's going to zoom me straight up in the air to a block that is outside of the shape in both directions and above it. I can then select the second position and that has the entirety of that shape selected. But what if it was really funky and it's not got any corners whatsoever? Well, that's not a problem either. You don't even need your axe. Let's get rid of it. Stand in the bottom front corner of your shape, making sure you are outside one side and also this side. So that is a bow here by the look of it. I'm going to type slash slash pause one. That's set in the first position. I can then come up to approximately where the opposite corner is going to be, round about here, slash slash pause two. There we go. Ah, but I've got a problem. I've not done it precisely right. Can you see? I've got a little bit of a wonky bit sticking out. I've not selected the whole thing. Don't worry. If you've done a whoopsie, you can adjust it and you can reset pause one and pause two as often as you want. Maybe I've got it in the wrong place. There you go. That changes the box. Oh no, it's still in the wrong place. I want to do that instead. There we go. Pause one. I can change that to maybe it wants to be down here and you can change your selection as much as you want. You can expand your selection. So I need to expand it out by two blocks in this direction. So I'm going to face that direction. I'm going to type slash slash expand and then two. That has expanded the selection by two blocks. You can see I'm completely inside it. However, this bit here, that's too big. I don't even know what's going on there. So we want to contract it slash slash contract one. And that is going to make that one less. Now it's an exact shape on that side. Now, if it doesn't matter that you've got a little bit of excess around your shape, that's not a problem. But if you need to be precise, that expand and contract command is really useful. And what is quite useful is you don't have to be facing in the direction of contraction or expansion. You can just type it slash slash contract three down and the roof has come down three blocks. Now, obviously, we've selected a cuboid here. There are ways to select different shapes, whether they're three dimensional shapes, really weird shapes. But I'm going to do that in a later video because it's a bit more complicated. But there are a number of things that you can do with your selection now. I'm going to be dealing with cutting, copying and pasting in the next video. So if that's what you're after doing, maybe go and have a watch of that. For now, we're going to talk about setting, which is filling your selection area with blocks of your choice. A good example of this is if you want to delete 
something in one go like this utter monstrosity of a wooden statue. To do that, with your shape selected, type slash slash set and then air. That will remove it completely. Then if I do slash slash SEL, you can see the thing has completely gone. Now let's say I wanted to make a floor. I'm just gonna select a bit over here. I'm gonna select a bit up here as well. That's about right. Look, that's a square-ish sort of, and I wanna turn that into stone. All I wanna do is go slash slash set and then stone. You can see it starts to auto fill. Click on the one that you want and then press enter. And that turns that into stone. If I get rid of the selection so you can see it better, that's an entirety of a stone floor. And you can make that any block you want, including liquids like water and lava. Exactly the same process, slash slash set and then water, click water, and that has turned that into water. If I wanna change that into lava, it's already selected. I don't have to select it again, slash slash set lava, click the lava, and bang, that turns that into a lava pool. But do be careful because the lava is real lava. Now let's say you made a mistake, you didn't want it as lava, you want to undo it. Slash slash undo, will put it back to what it was before you did that command. But actually, I've changed my mind, I wanna put it back again, slash slash redo, will put it back to what it was before I undid it. And you can stack those undos, slash slash undo, slash slash undo, slash slash undo, slash slash undo. I've got my stupid statue back again. Now let's say I want to delete this stupid statue, but I can't delete this legally protected rocky outcrop. If I do, I could end up getting taken away and put in jail, probably. That is not a problem, you can do it dead easy. I have my shape selected. Now what I'm gonna do is slash slash, and rather than set, I'm gonna use the word replace. And this is stripped oak wood, and I'm looking for stripped oak in my list. And if I click that, and then I've got what I wanna replace it with, and I'm gonna replace it with air. And there we go, it's taking out the stripped oak wood only. It has not replaced any of the other blocks. So, and then take out the selection, I can see my legally protected rocket outcrop is safe. Now let's say you've got another stripped oak wood statue. It doesn't have to be stripped oak wood, could be anything. And you wanted to get rid of it, but you didn't want to delete it. You wanted to turn those blocks into something else. Well, that's exactly the same process, except you don't replace it with air. Let's say I'm really greedy. I want to replace all of that stripped oak wood with emerald block. So that's what I'm going to do. Emerald block right there. Now I've got loads of emeralds. And you can go further than that as well. I like a bit of variation, so I want half of this statue to be diamond blocks, a quarter of it to be iron, and a quarter of it to be emerald blocks. I just put in this command here, separating out with commas, 50% diamond block, comma, 25% iron block, comma, 25% emerald block, and it just does the maths for me. It is completely random, and if you wanna play around with it, you can do that afterwards. This is actually a really good way to be able to make something look a little bit more natural and give it some variegation. I've got a completely plain stone wall just here, so I'm just gonna select this with my tool up in the top corner and down the bottom corner you can see I've got the entire wall selected now. Now I can use either the set or the replace command it works both ways. I'm going for 45% stone, 20% cobblestone, 20% andesite and 15% stone bricks. If I hit enter there and then I get rid of my selection so you can see it. Now I've got a wall that is randomly variegated and given loads of texture and it works really really well. Make sure your numbers add up to 100% otherwise it gets confused. So you are now the master of selecting, setting and replacing. Next episode is going to be about copying, cutting and pasting which goes really well with this. So if you don't want to miss that when that comes out really really soon make sure you hit the subscribe and the notifications bell and then it will let you know and you can come and see it straight away without missing it. That just seems like the logical choice to me. So I'll look forward to seeing you in that one or another video. You take it easy now. Bye.